shall we continue just where we left off? Yes, let's. Now then, the soul prepares to enter the physical body, the architecture of the body. It has folded its energies a little bit like folding its wings. Yes, a little bit like folding its angelic wings and instead bearing arms, growing legs, a little bit like a tadpole then, yes, sprouting itself. For some, the soul observes the process, you know, observing the miracle of it. The soul looks at this in a very beautiful, bountiful way. There is no dread, there is no, oh, there I go, that's where I'll be living for the next 50 or 60 or 80 or 100 years stuffed into that thing. No, the soul looks at it and I tell you that it knows gratitude. I tell you that it is grateful for the experience that it is about to enter. I tell you that as it begins to descend the ladder, the DNA ladder into the physical structure, into the density of the third dimension, its last thoughts, its last independently soulful thoughts before merging into the body are loving ones loving toward life, loving toward the opportunity for the gift of life, for the purpose that it has created for itself, for the garment that has been oh so carefully constructed for it. For all of this there is love, gratitude, compassion for all of life, and yes, a hope, a hope for remembering not a hope that it will succeed versus fail or that it will do well or accomplish much in life, for the soul by then is far beyond that already. No, it is a desire to simply know. By then it simply wishes to merge life, to merge with life, to know life, to become one with life, to be of service, to be in discovery, to be willful, to be of free will. And it immerses itself with a last thought, with a last decree, if you like. It immerses itself. Now, the process, so that you will know what it looks like or feels like, is a little bit like when you immerse yourself under water. It feels a little bit like that. A little bit like immersing yourself in warm bath water. That warmth, it begins there to feel the warmth of the mother's body. It begins to feel the warmth then, the heat of all of the amniotic fluids, all that surrounds it. It begins to bathe itself in a different light, yes. It already begins to feel a little bit more dense, a little bit like an anesthesia, you might know. And in that way, already it begins to immerse itself into the life. Once the first, the last decree is made and under water becomes, if you like, under conscious or unconscious for a time. For a time then there is nothing and nothingness. For as you might know, the process of birth then involves returning to the illusion of nothingness. The illusion of being nothing, of having nothing. So there is a discomfort but only for a moment of not being, knowing, doing, anything. There is the void, void space, void all things. At the same time, this includes a true contentment, for now the spirit is born. As the soul enters this state of dormancy, a little bit like that, the, if you like, the amnesia, if you like, from the anesthesia, if you like, then... In that moment, the spirit is born. The spirit is then that which will animate or direct or guide the soul. The spirit will communicate, commune between the body and the soul. The spirit is the animating force of all that is physical and non-physical. The soul holds the blueprint 
The soul is available. The soul is the matrix. It is the pattern. It holds all things. The spirit is the animating force that goes between body, ideas, soul, plan. It is the director, of, if you like. If you like, the soul then is the architecture or the structure of light, and the spirit then is that which animates that life, teaching and telling it how to be whole and how to direct more light in that process as well too. The spirit then is born in that moment. The spirit is born in the moment, and the soul, well, surrenders to the moment itself. A surrender meaning that it yields its combination or its alignment to the spirit. And so there is a partnership that is born, or a trinity, better put, where the physical essence, that essence becomes one of the trinity, the spirit, two, the soul, three. And these change from position to position in order to serve the life, to make the life as purposeful as possible. In the immersion, then, the spirit already begins to direct. It already begins to direct and align and place everything that the soul has brought to accommodate it. Now, imagine in this moment, then, that you are coming into rough terrain, that you have been roughing it for a time, and now you come into a new campsite or what it will be. Well, you must set aside, then, set in the provisions for the night, make certain that they will last you as long as is needed, and so the spirit sets aside and sets into doing this. All of this takes place before the birth, for the most part, again, few exceptions. Here, in this speaking, we are not with the exceptions, but with the generalized speaking. In this case, then, the spirit begins to take everything that the soul has brought to give to this life, the gifts associated with this life, and begins to order them, to place them as well where they will be most useful in this life. For instance, at what age they will come about, at what age something will be remembered, or something may be desired, or something may be called upon, or activated, or something may be needed. The spirit has advanced knowing of some of this, not all of it. Why and how? Well, the animating force, then, is able to go to soul's arrangement and begin to see, begin to determine what will be the birth? What will be the birth of the body? What will be the birth of the child in this case? It is this animating force that begins to predict, as it would be, when the birth will take place. And based upon the alignment of the other celestial bodies, based upon the wholeness that the soul has determined, all of those things that would be necessary, the spirit begins to animate them into place and to arrange them to when they will be most needed in life. In that way, then, already there is not only purpose, but now there is at least a little bit of vision, or at the very least, alignment. All of this is done according to a certain plan, but with a measure of creativity associated as well. It is not accidental, it is not haphazard, and it is not so carefully crafted that it does not leave room, wiggle room, perhaps we will call it. During all of this process, the child in the womb is growing, is developing. For every stage of development that the physical child goes through, the soul begins to relax more into the immersion process, and the spirit becomes more and more animated. Sometimes what the mother might experience as the kicking inside the body of the physical child, of the fetus within the body, has more to do with the animating spirit principle that is at work, aligning and arranging so very much that even the body finds a little bit of resistance here and there and begins to kick a little bit. Is that not an interesting tidbit to digest in a different way than you had imagined it before? So then, as we continue, 
the arrangement process continues to unfold. And in that way, then, the child's development is now almost assured. Almost assured. Now, let us deviate for just a moment and speak of the subject of miscarriage. If, in any moment's arrangement, some thing, some thought, some arrangement, some measure of planning or poor planning or what you would imagine, even within the perfection of perfections, when there is a misalignment of a purpose or a situation, something that has not been arranged well, the body or the mother or the child or the soul for the greater purpose may abort that experience. Now, all that has been aborted so that you will know from the physical perspective is a plan. You have set a plan aside, a very grand plan, a very grand landscape for how all would come together. But it did not seem at one point or one end or another that it would come together correctly. And so the plan, the idea, is either changed, if possible, if there is yet room and purpose and ability to change, or it can be aborted altogether, and the fetus is aborted. Of course, there are physical consequences or ideas or thoughts associated with this on the physical. But I tell you that on all of the other planes, it is no different than to say it is not as good an idea now as it was before. Or, better put, there is a better way, there is another day. This you can repeat to yourself again and again, for it is true. Always it can be said, there is a better way, there is a better day. And so all things then can be done again. Now in certain situations, one or more of the essence will say, Oh no, all is well, and all will continue. And what obstacles have been added, or what aspects were not immediately thought of, well, let us take these consequences as they come. I will accept them. I will accept responsibility for them. Imagine that. So it is not just a negotiation of sorts and is not a settling. Oh, I had to settle for a poor soul or a poor plan. No, it is not that. It is simply that something can be included. Truly, if you were to say to yourself, well, I believe that I only have enough dinner to feed eight. Ah, there's one more. Well, just fine. Tell him to come along then. We'll make it work. See? It is a little bit like that. The soul determines that it can make it work. It does not see it as a hardship or that too much has been heaped upon it. It is simply a slight change of plans. Now, here is a tricky moment because when there is a slight change of plans in this way, the map, the soul's map or the soul's code can be altered or changed to accommodate this. But here... At times, these moments come about just before birth, so the soul or the essence or the spirit did not note that, did not see that, did not recognize that, and so it is left unspoken. In this case, the soul must then at some point during the life go to retrieve that code, go to find what was deviated from the plan, why is there a seeming cut off from here to there, an ending that does not seem to have the next beginning? Well, sometimes here you have some of these changes, not always, but at times this can be explained. Always there is choice. Nothing is foisted upon a soul, nor the spirit, nor the mother, I tell you. Everything has been agreed to, sometimes many lifetimes in advance, even if the quantitative mind cannot recollect anything. If this were you and you would say, I would never 
choose that experience. I would never wish it upon anyone else, and I would never choose it for myself. Well, perhaps in this light you may say that, but one day we will quiz your soul together, you and I, and perhaps you will see that it is a different answer because there are different possibilities that are enumerated then. Once all has been considered then, the body begins to emerge from the womb. The proper signals are given and all begins to accommodate itself. And for a time, the soul immerses itself into the deeper waters. The soul does not go anywhere. It does not become unconscious and it is not truly conscious. It is present. It is in leisure. It is in observation. It is in discovery. It observes life. For a time, it becomes the observer of life for nothing else is asked of it or needed of it. The spirit animates all things and it is well to do and the life comes underway. So here we see then the beginning of this next life beginning to unfold. And now we can continue as we see what the soul, what spirit sees through the eyes of the newborn because now it has truly been born. In essence, a newborn, I tell you, is a very wise, wise, wise being. If you will subtract what you see of the little arms flailing about and the discomfort of the small lungs being asked to take in a human breath, an oxygenated breath, rather than a perfect womb-like breath of creation, it would seem to you such a poor and helpless thing. But life is strong. Life is vital. Life is purposeful. And so the breath engages, and with every breath the body becomes stronger. Now here I give you the metaphor of the butterfly that has just emerged from the cocoon. And the very first thing it does as well is not simply fly away. No. It takes its time to breathe, to unfurl its wings bit by bit, filling them with life, oxygenating them as well. And so the young babe does the same, oxygenating its life, recognizing its blood stream, energizing and beginning to learn about all of the different processes of being physical. Much of this is taken away by the spirit that animates all things. In the beginning, it is even the spirit that animates the physical body until the physical body is able to breathe on its own. Sometimes a child, a babe, will breathe on its own immediately, but sometimes not. And because life is purposeful, it needs a little push and a shove, a little assistance here and there. It is the spirit then that animates the child, animates all of the body functions, maintaining them at an adequate level, sustaining the live birth, sustaining the physicality. For remember that the spirit then is the bridge or is able to move between the soul's purpose and awareness and all that is needed upon the physical plane. In that way then, in all ways comes about then the first breaths of life and the first experience with bonding. Now, remember, the soul now is an observer. It is not yet a participant. There is nothing for it to participate in. There is no wisdom that is immediately needed. All that is needed is to maintain the body, to maintain the functions of the body, and to begin the process of bonding with the physical earth. The soul then is associated with the purpose of the life. The spirit that animates that purpose is associated with the life and of all that is earthly or physical. Again, it is the spirit that continues then. And in this way, 
the spirit moves about in organizing a life, in introducing the babe to all of the new aspects of life, speaking to it gently, looking out for all of its needs, speaking to it almost in ways and in tones that are soothing and can sound almost very mother-like as well. So if you like, the babe has a mother without, and it also has a mother within, and this maintains it again and again. Perhaps you have heard in some ways the very, well, sad, aspects of when young ones are abandoned even as quickly as they are born. Well, in that way, then, as they come about and the mothers abandon them, well, remember that I have said to you that it is the spirit that animates all things. It is the spirit that animates their life and maintains their functions for them. And you might say to yourself, Oh, in the miracle of life, and how that they managed to survive in this environment or another until they were discovered or found. Well, it is because spirit maintained them, animated them, held them in just the way that a mother would until life progresses. And here one finds in some cases the first milestone of life, the first marker on the map, at least for some. The soul observes everything. Nothing is missed. The soul sees everything. It is not that it is turned away at times and missed this little detail or that one. The soul sees everything and in its own way participates in everything. The soul is the child, becomes the child, knows the child, has planned the child and has planned for this moment and is now able to observe its good work. And so the soul observes life. What does life look like now? What does it need? What does it feel like? The soul is always, always, always in service. It is in service to the child. It is in service to life. The soul serves life. The purpose of life is life. The purpose of the soul is to better serve life by discovering its purpose and keeping it alive. The purpose then of the soul in this time is to continue to keep alive all that has been ordained. In this case, ordained means ordered. All that has been ordered and placed into the directive associated with this life, the soul keeps alive for the spirit to use. And the soul observes and observes and observes everything, recording everything. Everything is recorded in memory. Everything is recorded in memory. If you are a parent, think not then that the child, the babe, has missed anything that has been done or said, loving or otherwise. It has all been recorded. And so the soul continues to observe all of life and the newborn then begins to see itself reflected in its own life. The newborn belongs to the physical but not quite. Within the newborn is not simply a baby come to life. There is an ancient and wise and knowing being that has folded itself its wisdom, its energy, its love, its compassion, its vision, its purpose, its essence, reducing it, densifying it, and storing it, so that a very wise, wise being becomes a child who now remembers little or nothing except that it is helpless, that it is child. It cries for its mother. In essence, it cries for more because it is in these moments that there is the true forgetting, not only of where it came from, but in fact what it is and why it is. 
So here is the next level of immersion, to immerse oneself in the qualities of life by which one sees and knows and understands life as well. The newborn then observes with grand eyes, with wide eyes and greater truths. As these greater truths then are stored, the lesser truths become more important, the bodily functions become more important. And so the child, the little child now fully dependent, because it cannot yet remember itself, access the soul, nor do almost anything, observes with calm eyes or with wild eyes taking everything in and planning for itself all of its needs. The soul observes. It has nothing else to offer for a time. It is immersed in its own brilliant light. At times, however, at times and as part of the observant procedure, at times it will send forth a light, just as you might be called to look to the sky in a moment and thereby see a very bright light, a very bright star, just having noticed it for a moment and wondering if it has any unique or specific meaning where you are concerned. So the child then observes this light, this image, this perfect little orb of light that the soul has offered to it, and then the first bond is made. Somehow that infant, somehow that newborn now knows that there is a connection to something that is inner. It knows that there is an inner light. Not only the outer light that the eyes have been having a difficulty adjusting to, but for the first time, and at such a young age, it sees an inner light, and something will always, always, always draw it back to that inner light, to that inner place, from where something can be gleaned or understood. It is the soul's way to say that although it cannot be of further assistance in this moment, it is here. Here is a safe place. Here is wisdom. Here is life. Here is vitality. Here is healing. Here is love. Here is compassion. And at any moment that it becomes difficult, there in the body or in the outer planes, come here, come here, and you will find and you will have. And so in a symbolic gesture where light and frequency commune all things, the soul then is born into the child and the child forever knows that it has a soul whether or not it is ever told that by anyone, whether or not it becomes part of anyone's family belief practice, religion or spiritual orientation or like that, the child knows that it is deeply connected to a soul, to an essence. Later, if you like, it may call that God or God presence or essence or what it will be, but something is present now. And so the newborn continues to be just that, born into the world anew, full of discovery, full of self, full of movement in all of the ways that it does. And the soul continues to observe. Come by and by a certain point, and the babe, the newborn, has now become a toddler. It is now already moved into another stage of being. The soul, still very much at rest, still very much observant, and the toddler learns then from all that is outside, from every outside source. It observes and knows and discovers and continues to play. The spirit continues to animate all that it is and all that it has marking different stages of discovery, assisting it in the ways that it can, and here and there continuing to be the mother within. So there is symbolism that takes place within, 
there is a uniqueness in which the toddler will see and participate both in what is taking place outside world, but there is also an inner world or an inner reality that much of the time it will keep to itself. Perhaps you have seen those young ones where they seem to be gazing off at a distance, but at something. Well, they are gazing at something that is within, but it seems projected without. They are seeing it with their inner eyes, but they believe they are seeing it with their outer eyes, and they are accustomed then to speaking with that or acknowledging it in some way. Or sometimes there is already the knowingness to keep and be silent in this regard. So the toddler continues to be what it is, receiving its guidance or its messages as it would be from spirit, while soul remains not dormant, active, observant. The toddler then continues to grow. It pauses then, and then it begins to flow into what we will call the formative years, if you like. The years in which it begins to learn what its body means, what is expected of it in some ways. It begins to recognize already what it is told at least is right and wrong. Do this, but do not do that. Go here, but you are not allowed to go there. Eat this, but not that. And it begins to understand that it is not its own will that always takes place. No, you can't do that. No. And of course, what a brilliant word. No. However, it is not the word of spirit. Spirit does not say no. Spirit simply provides another opportunity. You see, another opportunity to see or to know. The mother within does not say no. And so it does not always understand this child when the mother or the father, the authoritative figure without, says no, says stop. And so the formative child then begins to look for another answer, for the answer no, well, that is not acceptable, it thinks to itself. And so here you have then the rebellion. The rebellion of all that is within, the rebellion of the thought, the rebellion against the physical, the rebellion against the mother, the rebellion against the authority or what it will be. And of course, then, it begins to see, now I understand limitation. Now I understand. Again, it is not the spirit that brings limitation. The spirit brings choices. Understand this because it will assist you a great deal as we continue. Because upon the physical world, it seems as if there is a great deal of limitation, a great deal of lack. You can't do this. You can't go there. You are not allowed. It is not given or like that. It is the outer plane then that has limits. The inner planes is not limited. It does, however, provide choices. The inner planes says this, but not that, which is not the same as to say no. It is to say look in another direction and you will find something that can be equally pleasing, equally engaging, equally bright or necessary or like that. The soul then observes this process as well. It observes how the child, the spirit, the personality now that is beginning to develop, it observes how this process undergoes. And it makes, if you like, notes. Notes for another time of what this particular being will need to overcome challenges. It observes how it approaches the first no scenarios, the first limitation scenarios. It observes how the personality that it has constructed, after all, how that is gone about, how it makes with 
limitation, something, and of course the keys and the clues of how the soul will animate and assist this essence later on is already in the planning stages here. The formative years last until, well, as little as seven in some and as much as eleven in others. It is a very broad window that is here. And just as you have seen, there are children that are very childlike and there are others that have seemed older than their years for a very long time. So the formative years means exactly that. What is being formed? Well, the personality is being formed. Ideas are being formed. Life stratagems are being formed. And all of this then receives assistance by spirit and for the most part observant qualities by the soul which practices something that would seem to non-interference but in essence it is more that it is studying for a future time, studying for a future year. The child then continues to grow and to develop and the soul sees through its eyes, literally that. The soul looks through the eyes of the child to see what it sees. Imagine that you put on someone else's prescription glasses just to see how distorted or clear is their vision. And so the soul does the same thing. It looks through the eyes of this child during these formative years to see what reality it is looking. Well, as you well know, most of all of this is somewhat of an illusion. So the soul looks to see what kind of illusion, what kind of distortion is being seen or experienced. And again, Plans are underway at some point to correct this, to bring it about in its own way, to bring about corrective lenses, corrective truths, experiences, ideas, and as well as to know how and when to introduce these at another time in life or at the most appropriate time to do this. In the meantime, the formative years continue and the child then begins to make for itself the beginnings of its own ideas. It begins to make the own ideas or plans. Well, when I grow up, I will do this or that for myself. When I grow up, I will always want this or I will never want that. And it begins to have certain ideas. Some of these are aligned with the pattern that was created and some are in opposition to that. But what matters at this time is that it begins to enliven that pattern. Somehow something is being shaken loose. Something is being born. It, the personality is being born and the personality is beginning to arrange itself to order itself in its own idea, in its own choosing. The personality now is at work with spirit. Now personality and spirit are one, at least for a time. The spirit that animates is no longer a mothering force. Now it becomes part of the enhancement of the personality. It begins to help the personality to dress itself, as it were. It dresses it in ideas. It allows it to try this on and then this and then this idea, and then the other fact, and then on and on, trying and discarding, trying and discarding. Sometimes the personality will find exactly what it is looking for almost immediately, and at other times it can find no such thing, and it is a constant state of dress and undress, dress and undress, making itself known in all of its different ways with the assistance of spirit, all the while formative years, forming a personality, dressing itself with layers. Well, sometimes these are very thin layers, particularly if the child has had what it believes is a good or a happy childhood. In this case, the veils, the layers are thinner and the child continues to grow and to develop. In the case where the child does not live in a healthful or loving 
or compassionate environment, there are more layers, more layers between what is original or unique and what it believes is necessary to move out into the world. So there are more layers of protection, you could call them, more layers of density or identity density, meaning different costumes, different roles, different ways to turn inward or outward, different postures that the personality begins to assume. All of this in the very younger, formative years. And again, the soul continues to take note, to observe what it will need to add later, how later it will assist the personality, the being, the child to become the child again or to orient itself to its own youthful nature or to unlayer or de-densify itself. The soul begins to make again notes of what to add, what to include, what to place along the way, what to add to the map in this way and to make arrangements. The formative years begin to pass and one finds oneself then in what today you call the tween years. Of course, some years ago these were called the pre-pubescent years, but that no longer suits now. And so the tweens that come before the teens, well, that is a better way to put it. And why? Well, for instance, these tweens then have already found some nature of maturity within themselves. Why and how do they do this? Well, for the most part, they are already arranged to do so. They are more advanced than perhaps you were at a certain age, though you may argue the point if you like. Into these essences, then, there is an advancement, a little bit of a speed-up gait, if you will, that you did not have. Yours was more gradual at this particular time. In fact, it was almost a little bit in the retarded level. A little bit more of a pause is what it was. And now it is a little bit different. So you begin to see that how the generations already then are built differently, are accelerating into the next life force or into a higher density. This happens more quickly now than it did many generations ago or even just a few as well. Therefore in this tween state then there is an advancement, an advancement that takes off with high regard, an advancement that makes all things more unusually creative, heightened sensibilities, almost of a psychic nature, hence your term begins already with what is an indigo. It becomes almost apparent by here if it has not already. And so the nature then of the being, the nature of the tween, the tweeny, if you like then, is a quick gate that it passes through that quickly takes it into an advanced state of awareness if it will choose. The advanced state of awareness temporarily puts it in contact with the soul. Not simply the spirit or the animating force, but soul. And so there is a meeting of the minds, a meeting of the hearts, a meeting of the spirits, in which this advancement can literally boost the young one very quickly past a certain set of gates. And in here you would find one of the first DNA activations at this young age and again it is for almost all now but not all because there are many different types upon the earth many different heredity types and some have been activated and advanced and others have not for the genetic structure does not yet allow it because it is a little bit more delicate than it would be otherwise in this delicate state, then, it must be more nurtured in more of a quiet state. You will note that there are some within this tween that are highly susceptible to migraine headaches. Those that are highly susceptible to the migraines must also be very, very careful. 
during this time because although they may advance and be in contact with the soul it does not come easy for them it is not a quick skip and a jump if you like it comes more at a cost more at work where for others all of a sudden they are just there for those that do progress more quickly then they become aligned with soul and it is as if they have a grander higher more adult perspective than they could have had even a day before that here all of one sudden they have become the ancient ones they have become the knowledgeable ones they have certain knowledge and ideas and principles that others did not have and they go about surprising their parents again and again in many different ways as new talents are born and the idea and how to manage these talents to activate them gifts and creativities artists are born musicians are born excellent ones maestros are born great minds begin to take off here because there has been a meeting with the soul and where the soul has seen fit the soul has literally fed the tween with what they can use now a new food a new vibration a new idea to introduce a new subject consciously in some unconsciously in others and so is born the new and the next identity and this new being now the personality becomes advanced there is a maturation process that seems almost too much for such a young age certainly it does not seem to fit the body type and yet there it is there it is and so here you have an activation that is present now in the younger ones that was not present in previous generations again even just a few generations ago it was not there it was not present and now it is an activation by the soul that says i know i see i sense the readiness and it begins to prepare already the life for some activating forces activating truths mysteries as much as much as can be given in this case during this window the soul will offer as much of itself as possible as much as the essence wants or is willing or can have or can safely activate and so you have here great great advancements in some small amounts in others and in rare cases less or not as much the soul as you can see has now marked the moment has taken an interest in the body in the being in the life stream the soul has now said this one is mine i will work with this i will further activate this in these moments then spirit and soul and body or being or mind or what you will term it have come together and here in this union then there is a first gate or a quick advancement that takes care in the spinal column in the dna making all things purposeful active and like that we pause and we will continue with this subject then hoping that it is interesting and to your liking